Tom Nye is a dear friend, and he's he's a great diplomat. Um, I knew him as when he was the, um, the deputy secretary of state, and really dealt extensively with our issues. He was always a friend to Israel, always had an open uh, a mind and an open ear, uh, and. Uh, but he represented an administration, a Democratic administration. He was working with Hillary Clinton at the time, the Secretary of State. And they represented a position on the peace process, certainly on the Iran deal, uh, that was at odds with Israel's position. But we always had open open channels of communication. Um, Tom will come here. He will uh, he will build personal relationships. He's a very personal person. He's extremely funny uh, and warm and uh, has a very, I think, a very a special place in his heart for the state of he, uh, state of Israel and for the Jewish people. He himself is Jewish. And um, he will work very hard on those people to people relationships. I, I know he's thinking that way already. And uh, but he will also be on the policy level. And uh, while the Biden administration, I do not feel, is about to embark on major initiative vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians, uh, that will remain its position uh, to seek a two-state solution. Uh, it will try to restrain to the greatest degree possible uh, major Israeli uh, construction projects in Judea and Samaria in the eastern part of Jerusalem. He will probably work uh, to find a, a solution for reopening, some way of reopening uh, the U.S. consulate uh, to the Palestinians. In Jerusalem, and, and many members of the government uh, uh, have come out expressly, expressly against that. They will oppose that. That's certainly going to be a flashpoint in the relationship. And now, as uh, with the possible renewal of talks uh, between the signatories uh, to the Iran nuclear deal, the JCPOA of 2015, uh, particularly led by the United States, um, and Israel continues to oppose that agreement and to warn uh, the United States that Israel cannot coexist with Iran that has the threshold capacity, the ability to make a nuclear weapon very quickly, uh, that too will be a source of potential friction between the two countries. You mentioned, uh, Ambassador Oren, uh, the issue of the reopening of the American consulate uh, for the Palestinians in East Jerusalem. Um, there has been objection in Israel, of course, uh, to the move, uh, but I am assuming the two parties are talking, Israel and the U.S. What do you think a solution might look like? I don't want to speculate here. It, it could be something like, I don't know. again, I don't want to speculate. Now I'm going to speculate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it could be something like, oh, we're just going to open it, but it's going to be symbolic and it's not going to have real authority. And uh, uh, we'll maybe put it in the western part of the city in, in uh, Agron Street. Um, I think my personal feeling is that Israel must oppose it because uh, it is a, a substantive retreat from recognition uh, of Jerusalem as our capital. I don't think any country in the world would uh, abide by another company, country coming in and saying, listen, we don't recognize your sovereignty here. We're going to have two different consulates here, one for one for Arabs and one for Jews. Uh, I don't think that that is uh, that's a retreat to a policy which I long felt was um, not implementable in any realistic way and ultimately very anti-Semitic. It was saying that, you know, the Jews can only live in one part of the city, but they can't live in other parts of the city. Uh, what, what, country, what city in the United States would have such a regulation, such restriction to be called anti-Semitic? So I, I think Israel should stand on its sovereign rights here, um, always open to ideas, creative ideas. But at the end of the day, is, Jerusalem must remain our united, undivided and sovereign capital. I want to ask you about a research that came out yesterday by Mitivim Research Institute looking at Israel-U.S. relations. Just 11% of Israelis ranked Biden as good for Israel. Do you think his administration is good for Israel? We used to see record highs in these surveys during the Trump years. Yeah, I, it, I think that uh, there's concern there. I think it's very pro-Israel. I, I actually know they're pro-Israel. And I think, you, you know, you, you take a, a person like uh, Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, the National Security Advisor, uh, Jake Sullivan, and the President himself. I, I know these individuals very, very well uh, on the personal as well as the political level, and they are deeply committed to Israel security. Again, they have that place in their heart for Israel, which is so important for us Israelis to know that our American friends have that place in their hearts. It wasn't always the case with previous administrations. Um, but having said that, um, all of these leaders come from a certain party. They come from the Democratic Party, and they are subject to pressures within that party. Um, and I know that the pressure, for example, to reopen uh, the consulate in the eastern part of the city is, is rising all the time. We had uh, three Democratic senators visiting Israel several weeks ago, not necessarily from the progressive wing of, of the Democratic Party, and they were adamant and express in saying they expected that consulate to be reopened. It's become a big issue, like a flagship issue within the Democratic Party. 
Um, you know, Israelis will shake their heads and say, wait a minute, you just withdrew from Afghanistan. Yeah, you're facing threats all over the world, and this is going to be your big policy issue, you know, opening this consulate. Uh, well, it is, and we're going to have to deal with it. Um, but given the, the state of the Democratic Party and its attitudes toward Israel, I don't think we could have a better constellation of leaders than, than Joe Biden, Anthony Blinken, Jake Sullivan, and now Tom Knights. Ambassador Michael Oren, pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.